Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, Week 14, DraftKings Picks and Preview. Want to let everyone know to smash that like button, leave your DraftKings handle in the comment section, and tell me your favorite wide receiver below $4,000 on the DraftKings Millionaire Maker Slate for Week 14. If you do that, people, you will be in a draw for 20 DK dollars. Winners announced on Monday's live show, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And if you're just listening to this on the audio version, go rate, review, subscribe. And in that review, leave five stars, something nice about the show, and your DraftKings handle. That is a separate draw, so if you want to get in twice or just go to every single episode and enter all the draws, you'll have a much better chance of winning. Swear to God. Joining me to break down the entire slate from awesomeo.com. You've known him from the past two Fridays, replacing... Jeff Ulrich. Ulrich will be back this week for the DraftKings ownership percentage, but it is Ben Chaza. What's up? What's up, man? How are you? I, I've run out of fun ways to say your name, I think. That's all right. Yeah, no, three straight weeks. I'm uh, Now I'm in the groove, though. This is good. We're, we're getting to the home stretch in NFL. You have surprisingly cracked. I, I don't know if you're top five because I have like the same people on every week. But you're definitely top 10 in terms of Pat Mayo experience appearances for 2018. You must be at like 20. Yeah, no, I'm moving up the ranks. Uh, it's good. Hey, n- nothing wrong with that. It, I, I always get the Pat Mayo bump, so I try to get on as, as much as I can. Well, the problem was when you first started coming on, you were on like three times yeah. during the year. You were <laughs> winning like 70 grand every time you came on. Now that's just not in the cards anymore. Unfortunately, that was unsustainable. Who knew? But yeah, the first handful of times I went on, that was good stuff. I, I was always traveling too. I was in Colorado. I was out west. Uh, Every time I would come on, though, good things would happen. So we need to rekindle that part of it. Do you know what was a good thing for me? And we discussed this on Friday show. I had a great week on DraftKings last week for the first time in like two months. Do you know why? Josh Allen? Josh Allen, Ben. Of course. What a stud. He's the the best. Of course he is. If Charles Clay could catch, we would really have uh, Josh Allen season going right now. But yeah, 135 yards rushing. I. It's pretty impressive. I did not see this mobility coming, even though I knew it could move a little. I don't even know how. I mean, I guess, I mean, clearly he is mobile. He's rushing for like 135 yards, but just <laughs> they have no offense. So this is their only play. No, it's Backstreet. Yeah, Backstreet. Uh, it's insane that him and Zay Jones are, are getting the connection. And now they definitely got a winnable game this week, obviously, with my lowly Jets coming to town. All right, we'll get to that eventually. Let's start with the running backs, though. If we go to the very top of the pricing, do you know who is number one here on this list? It's Christian McCaffrey. And then there's Saquon, there's Elliott, and Elvin Kamara and Melvin Gordon is probably not going to play. He could play, probably not going to play. So those four guys from the very top, I think you go... I'm going with Barkley this week. If, if I have to pick one to go around, I think it's going to be Barkley against the Skins team, which dropped to 24th in DVOA rush defense so far. They're favored in this game on the road. It does seem like a trap spot because maybe Sanchez just hates New York so much that he's going to let his frustrations on the Giants. Who knows? But I just really like Barkley to see like 25 plus touches in this game. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, this is a pretty good spot. Obviously, the Redskins are done. Not their fault. Everybody is hurt. They're losing a handful of guys to IR each week. It should translate, not even if Sanchez is turning the ball over, but Saquon's going to get a massive workload. The Giants have looked better. They won last week. Um, That was a crazy game. So I'm with you. Obviously, McCaffrey is is great, but the price is sky high. The ownership, he was 40% last week. I'm not sure he's going to get to those heights this week. He's certainly going to be popular. I'd rather take the savings with someone like Saquon or Kamara, who's kind of been, I don't want to say under the radar, but he's, he's certainly not doing what he was doing earlier in the year. Well, I mean, a lot of it has to do with Satan himself, Mark Ingram, returning, and Drew Brees just deciding he wants to be like the Karl Marx of the NFL offense. It's just distribute the wealth to everyone evenly, and then no one can be ex- upset, except for fantasy owners who hate this shit. But with Kamara, like, it's still a bit mu- – I, I know we can still have these spike games – but there's no way that you could rate him as highly as the other three guys, could you? No, but I think at the same time, you know, he's the cheapest of, of the four. He might be the lowest owned of the four. And, and when we when Kamara burst on the scene, I don't want to bank on the unsustainability, but what we saw was he was getting there with little volume. Um, and he still always possesses that. He has such home run upside. 
just because his touches, he can make more happen than most. Um, so against Tampa, even if the workload is not going to be what we had seen early in the year where it was just absurd, he was just getting so much work and he has the explosiveness at 8,100. He can just blow that tag out of the water just on upside alone. Yeah, I feel like the other guys are in that same boat, too. Maybe Elliott and Barkley. It's really difficult with Barkley because he's, yeah, I think he's touched the ball 20-plus times every week since week five when they played Carolina. But a lot of those are coming on the ground unless they fall so far behind. Then he ends up with, like, the seven catches. I guess the big problem is I'm going to go with Barkley. I think that he can get there. But I just worry about if I can't jam in McCaffrey and Barkley, which is going to be super tough this week. Uh, I mean, you can do it, but the guys that you want to pay down for are also running backs, and you can only max play three, so that becomes difficult. There's no Jalen Samuels at tight end on DraftKings, so that's a bit rough. Can McCaffrey, like, I don't want to not play McCaffrey, I guess is the thing. But yeah. Yeah, may- maybe it's just I played him the last two weeks. It's worked out so well that, you know, you feel like a downturn is coming, but is it? I mean, he's he's obviously game script proof. He's going to get the work. I don't want to say a, a downturn's coming, but at the same time, I don't think he's going to continue to do what he's doing recently. So uh, I, two weeks ago, I, I caught a good piece of him against Seattle, which was, of course, great. Last week I had some, but I did not get to 40%. I'm more banking that it, it's a little more aggression. The price obviously is now over 9K. I, I think for me, it's going to be hard to get leverage on the field with a guy like McCaffrey. I, I would rather just pay down, save some money and kind of make a, a slight stand there, to be honest. Okay, so I I was able to get above the field on Christian McCaffrey the last two weeks. I played him in 100% of every That's round. one way to do it. I, I've just been so, and it's actually been working out for me the last two weeks that I, I divvied myself up enough. Like I was trying to play more and more lineups. Like, oh, I'll take X amount of this guy and X amount of this guy. And as soon as I went back to playing 10 lineups and being like, here are like the three guys that I'm super into this week. I'm going to play them in every lineup. Then mix and match with the other pieces. Take some overweight stances on some guys that are lower owned or maybe even fade some guys completely that are super super highly owned and that doesn't always work out either but I just feel like concentrating my core that way and really going all in on a few players playing the, that few of lives so you're playing 150 obviously you don't need to do that but I think if you're going to play like five or ten or even three that it's not the worst case scenario if, if you hit you hit big yeah I mean you have limited room to navigate a portfolio if you're only playing five lineups because your lowest percentage is 20 percent so like it's not like you can get exact targets you know where if you're playing 100 150 lineups you can really make nuanced stands um and you can take small positions bigger positions so i don't mind that at all obviously he's even at this price he's one of the safer plays on the board i'm not saying i'm ruling him out in cash uh, i might actually look to target him and hedge it that way but in tournaments i probably will try to take a little savings and take one of the other big three and then work down from there So do you want to talk about this mid-range or do you just want to go to the guys that everyone wants to know about? Uh, Yeah, this mid-range is pretty ugly. I I wouldn't mind just pretending they don't exist with David Johnson. Anytime, talk about he was awful last week as usual. Now he's 6,500. And maybe Chase Edmonds will come in and steal all of his touchdowns again. Yeah, again. Are you another guy who's this Philip Lindsay situation, he was talking about mega owned. I took a position of him last week. I didn't even come close to getting over the field. I, I liked Lindsay last week. What happened to me was I ended up going with I, I played Godwin in every lineup. I played McCaffrey in every lineup, and there was someone else. I completely forget who it was. Fortunately, it wasn't Matt Lacoste because that did not turn out well. That those were my yeah. bad lineups, my Lacoste lineups. But even yeah. some, but even some of those did pretty well. Like if you didn't have Kelsey at tight end, it really didn't matter who you had at tight end. Yeah, no, you needed him. Yeah, I was. Tariq Cohen was the guy that I got way over compared to the field, and he that game got out of control fast. That that, that um, was a Friday special from you on the show, Tariq yeah, Cohen. Uh, yeah, Tariq Cohen, and I like the Giants to win that game, um, which was good. They bailed me out of the Falcons portion of the show, which we will not talk about. Burn that tape. Um, do you have any interest in Eckler, just looking down a little? I know he was uh, bad. They should have went to Jackson earlier in that game. But I feel like no one's going to really jump on him if it's going to be maybe a pseudo time split. 
Well, I think this is a nice place to start with the three guys that we'll really have to emphasize on this slate because they could be kind of slate breakers if things go the right way and you're going to have to have them. So the split between Eckler and D Justin Jackson, everyone is going to use, if they're going to use one of these two, everyone's going to use Justin Jackson. So I think that you're right that Eckler is somewhat intriguing in this matchup solely because no one's going to use him. You have the big price increase, but he's still severely outtouched and outplayed uh, in terms of snap count, not actually on the field in terms of production, Justin Jackson. But do you think that the Chargers will just say, you know what, Austin Eckler is perfect for this 40% of snaps role. He should not be handling the ball between the carries. We'll still use him in the passing game, but we will flip it over. Or do we see what we've seen every game that Melvin Gordon's been out where Eckler's going to get close to 20 touches? Yeah, I mean, I have to imagine that they start to gravitate towards giving you know Jackson more, more and more work. But I'm not sure how much that hurts Eckler. I'm not saying I don't want him to get all his volume taken away. But if he can become kind of a more aggressive what he is when Melvin Gordon is in, that may suit him better where it's just he's getting the targets. He gets more carries than he normally would. But he's also not taking on the, the, the lead role. That goes to Jackson, who clearly ran well. Um, I just feel like at 6,200 with the passing upside that he still has against a garbage defense, I wouldn't be stunned to see him rebound with a good game at ownership that would be sky high if he would have produced in the Monday night game. I guess the problem is when you look at the other guys around Eckler, so he comes in at $6,200, like why wouldn't you pay the extra 100 for Philip Lindsay again? Yeah, I mean, all in all in cash and things like that, I probably would. But for me, just, just on thinking about ownership and thinking about kind of recency bias, Philip Lindsay is – going to be popular. The Niners defense, especially against the rush is not the worst unit. Um, they're on the road. I actually think the Niners compete in that game. Whereas you got the chargers against the, the Bengals who are, who are also just completely in shambles, like the Redskins, they're done. Um, I think Edgar makes a pretty solid pivot off someone like Lindsay. So that entire range has like Aaron Jones, Nick Chubb, James White, David Johnson, who you mentioned, although that matchup against Detroit since snacks, has been yeah. around. Has not been great between the tackles, although if they would actually use him in the passing game, that would help a little bit. We'll we'll get to my favorite Cardinal here a little bit later on. And then you have Joe Mixon at $6,400 at is a huge dog with Driscoll. You would just hope for dump off City there, or he just does it all himself. And then, like you mentioned, you have Lindsey, you have Eckler, Sony Michelle. I actually think is in a really nice spot that no one's going to use because you can run all over the Miami Dolphins and just pray that Devlin doesn't steal his touchdowns. But I don't see that happening two weeks in a row. Yeah. I mean, the Patriots are always tricky. Now you have Burkhead as well, who shouldn't, you know, directly impact Sony Michelle. Obviously he's getting more work on the ground. That's more of a James white situation. It's just scary because you need him to find the end zone. Um, and against Miami should have plenty of chances, but we did see last week, even in, in a good game script, uh, it can be pretty dicey. So Justin Jackson is $3,800. Where's my main man here? Uh, where's Jalen Samuel? What's he? He's 38 he's, as well? Yeah, he's 37. He's 37. And Wilson is Wilson. Jeff Wilson Jr. is going to come in at $3,800 as well. Could you use all three of them and just spend up everywhere else? Uh, I think it's a little too much opportunity cost, to be honest. It's not even that they can't all easily pay off their tags it's just on the raw point side you the only way that would work is if for some reason you think that there are receivers a multitude of them that are going to just go so nuts that you can sacrifice you know the raw points that the McCaffrey's and Saquon's of the world are going to get you okay there's another name I want to throw in there too and we'll get to him in a second so between Wilson Samuels and Justin Jackson cut one right away that you won't use I'll take Justin Jackson toss him aside me too even though he was awesome and i like him a lot i'm just i'm not going there so that leaves us between jeff wilson jr and jalen samuels and there's question marks with both of these guys but i still think that samuels especially with the rate that the steelers are passing right now even even when they're winning in games no matter how big of favorites that they are and this week they're on the road in oakland it's a nice matchup on the ground that i still think that you can get jalen samuel to around 20 touches whether it be on the ground plus through the air that he can be so valuable in this matchup i think i would go with him I'm with you. I'm a Jalen Samuels fan. I liked him a lot. He was awesome in college. I'm a little biased from that. You know, they used him in a multitude of different ways. I'm also just not a, I don't, I don't, 
feel like many people are, but like Ridley doesn't exactly, you know, put too much fear in me that he's just going to be so good right out of the gate that Samuels isn't going to be involved. He should have the passing work regardless. Uh, and I, I think he does see plenty of volume against, you know, it's the Raiders. So this is a pretty good spot for a guy like him. And I, I think we see a, a good performance. So there's another guy at the same price and no one's going to use, but I think that he's in a particularly good matchup here and you could probably scrape him probably 5% on maybe even less because so many people are going to gravitate towards this range and take Jalen Samuel, Jeff Wilson, or even Justin Jackson. And it's LeGarrette Blunt. Garrett well, Blunt in games where the spread is basically within four, that you think this game is going to be close the entire time. And right now, the Detroit Lions are three-point favorites on the road in Arizona. Arizona, one of the worst run defenses in the entire league. It's very clear what Detroit wants to do in these games. They want to run, and they want to run with Blunt. Now, the caveat is if on Johnson is back, none of this makes any sense. But if he is out, again... I think you could see 20 carries on the ground for Blunt against a really weak defense. There's no one to take away carries from him. If Theo Riddick plays in this game, well, LeGarrette Blunt wasn't doing anything anyway because they're losing by too much. This game needs to be close or Detroit needs to be up, and you're going to see them just over and over and over. Use LeGarrette Blunt here. Plus, Kenny Galladay is going to be shut down by Patrick Peterson. So I think the two Lions to use this week are going to be Bruce Ellington and LeGarrette Blunt, and just no one's going to take him. And out of all these guys, you know he gets the goal line work. If there's one thing you know, he will not get faltered. That that would be a, a new scenario. I just, first of all, yeah, we have to see what's up with carry on because if he plays, you can forget it. But, I mean, yeah, he, he could get 15-plus touches when you average three yards a carry, it doesn't amount to much. He's going to have to fall in the end zone a couple times. Like we saw on Thanksgiving this is a pretty good matchup to do it. I just Detroit is, I mean, Stafford once again, last week, not great uh, to say the least. They've been just so ugly. Um, but yeah, I, I guess you could do worse there. I, to be honest, I'm sure I'm not going to get to him. I just cannot stomach playing him. I'd rather take more of the dynamic pass catchers when I do punt that running back, but yeah, he's always got multiple touchdown upside. If that's the case, then that's why you would come back to Samuels, I think, because of the yep. pass catching ability. We saw a ton from Jeff Wilson last week. That's also what would worry me about Justin Jackson is that he doesn't do anything in the receiving game. And maybe where the Chargers have used two running backs in the passing game before, that it's not that big of a deal. We just haven't seen it. But would you expect Wilson to see the same sort of target share that he saw last week? Because that seemed a bit much. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't think that kind of... I'm not, I, I do expect this guy, not that I know much about him, to, I mean, clearly he can get involved in the passing game. Nine targets, I don't, I don't think we see that. That whole offense, I mean, Mullins threw for, it was 400 plus, I think, which is it's a lot of yards. Uh, you know, in Seattle, they're playing catch up the whole time. He, if he can pad a little with the receiving, yeah, at 3,800, it makes it a lot easier to pay off the tag. But I'd be pretty stunned if we consistently see you know, nine double digit potential targets for a guy like this going forward. So we've talked about the guys at the very top. Uh, We like them all because they're all really good and you have to really Mm -hmm. narrow it down which one you like the most. But when you pay down, you're going to fall onto one of those four guys and most people will not fall on Blunt. And frankly, I like Samuels way more than I like Blunt. I just wanted to bring that up in a discussion of here's a guy that no one's going to own that has a path to like 25 plus touches and they're all going to be on the ground, which hurts his overall DraftKings value, but he's going to get all that goal line work that he's in play, I think. So between $4,000 and $6,000, dollars is there anyone you're looking at because all these guys are going to come in super low owned yeah it's pretty ugly um i'm thinking drake uh yeah i he was on the short list they gave ballard a little work though i I have trouble with miami in terms of their running backs like what they want to do i i never get them right with gore and then i i do worry that maybe he gets a little bit drake Drake does make sense especially if you think they're going to be behind which they should be. The one guy I'll go to, and he is he has killed me the entire year. I do not think I've got him right once. It's Josh Allen's, I don't want to say partner in crime, but it, can't it's do shady. It. You, you can't do it. He, Josh, no. Josh, the re, we, uh, Gary and I were fleshing this out a little bit on the ranking show, but 
Josh Allen doesn't pass to LaShawn McCoy. All the, like, it, we're seeing this with Gus Edwards with Lamar Jackson. Uh, it's more of a thing in Chicago when Trubisky passes to Cohen because that's a part of their game plan. But a lot of these running backs, especially even McCaffrey, get so many of these catches, Barkley included, that there's nothing to be had, so they dump it off to the running back who's standing five feet away from them. With Josh Allen, he just runs. So Lamar Jackson, he just runs. No, and it's true that that's been killing them. And if we see a game like that again, Shady's going to produce like he's been producing. I mean, last week he had he caught all four of his targets for a whopping 12 yards. Um, but one thing, though, I think could make a difference here is we haven't seen really Shady get out there with a lead. Josh Allen's running for his life because he has to and because it's kind of getting out of control. If Buffalo can play a somewhat normalized game, I think we could see Shady have 20 carries Josh Allen's rushing yards be way down. Um, and maybe he does, you know, he's obviously not getting any of these touchdowns. Allen's running them in right now. I think that could change though. If, if Buffalo controls a game and at home against the jets, there's no better spot to do that. There isn't last time against the jets, 26 carries, <laughs> 113 yards and two touchdowns four weeks ago. But that, again, that's, with, but that's also not with Josh Allen, that no. Allen's going to pill for away from his overall volume. And like you mentioned, he's a threat to score around the goal line too, that, I don't know, it just with the lack of shady usage in the passing game, I know the four catches last week are nice, but the weeks before, one, one, like that's not doing me any good. That, I mean, I don't like Adrian Peterson this week. I actually think that Blunt is sort of like the homeless person's Adrian Peterson. He's like the value Adrian Peterson because yeah. they're not doing anything in the passing game. But at least I know that if they don't fall behind by 21 points, that they're just going to pepper Adrian Peterson with carries. I, I don't want to play Peterson, but I have him on the same level as shady. I think... Honestly, I'd probably just go back to Spencer Ware, even in the bad matchup. I have no problem with Spencer Ware either. Um, you know, <laughs> we're not going to see what the ownership, of course, that was a ridiculous situation last week. And, and yeah, I mean, he didn't have the best game, but he found the end zone. This is a much tougher matchup. They are at home. Uh, he's still going to dominate the carries back there. And I would expect his target to rise. I mean, he was not involved in the passing game, which I thought was pretty surprising, to be honest. Now, they just re-signed the Candyman, Charkandrick West. Damian Williams is still kicking around in that backfield. But it was a really odd, it was a weird game script for how that score ended up because you think they just would have pounded Ware on the ground over and over. Do you think that he, like, he was running routes and he was on the field during these passing downs. Like, do, do you think that it was just a one weird one-week blip that all of a sudden Spencer Ware's, I don't want to say that he gets a Kareem Hunt role, but like 80% of the Kareem Hunt role? Because if he does get 80% of the Kareem Hunt role, the price is right. Yeah, I think it's more of that than not. Um, I watched most of that game. It, it was a weird game because, like, you know, Tyreek Hill busted and he was close to ending the slate. Like, he, he had so many opportunities, uh, you know, for 70-yard touchdowns. And then, obviously, Kelsey was just dominant. Um, so, we'll see. I, I'm not basing too much on that one. This is a totally different animal. Obviously, Baltimore's defense, I learned the hard way. It's a lot better than I thought they were. They looked great last week. So, We'll see, um, but I'm not giving up on where just yet. Uh, last one, I'll just chuck him in there because I, as I've mentioned to you, I've said it on the show and people have mocked me already, which is probably fair because my picks have been so bad this year. But the last time I called an underdog outright winner, the Titans did beat the Patriots. So I do think the Ravens beat the Chiefs this week. And if they're going to do it, they're going to need to run the ball like 70 times. So Gus Bus, any love? Not really, but that's mostly because I don't I don't see them winning. Um, I would almost rather go to Ty Montgomery, who I think will be what we still haven't seen. I, I, I played Ty, Ty Montgomery some last week. I thought I was being a genius because I knew I thought they were going to be behind. They weren't. He still wasn't horrible. Uh, I think he picks up some easy passing work if, if the Ravens do fall behind in a game like this. If they do control it. I, I totally get the logic for Gus Edwards. The the problem is with Gus Edwards, he runs into the shady problem is that Lamar Jackson's the one who's probably going to score the touchdown, not him. Yeah, that it, it's really tough. Um, you know, you have such a limited window if you need to find the end zone and then your quarterback is also a huge threat to take those opportunities. So we're on team Samuel from down here. Samuels. I really am. Yeah, definitely. How much do you need to play of him to make sure that you're overweight, do you think? Or do you think that all these guys down here break it up a little bit? Because I, I have a feeling most people will end up on Samuels. I think he's going to, I mean, he's definitely going to be a popular punt play, but it's not going to be like Spencer Ware or something where it's such a vacuum where there's a funnel position. There's options within his price range. You know, if you have 
I think, you know, 30%, you'll, you'll come in quite over. Wide receivers. If we go to the very top, actually, before you do that, smash the like button, leave your DraftKings handle, and tell me your favorite wide receiver below $4,000 this week. That way, you can be entered in a draw for 20 DK bucks. Go do that. But at the top, Antonio Brown is the most expensive receiver of the week. This is always a tricky spot with Antonio Brown. He's $9,000. I think that Michael Thomas is just in a much better spot. Frankly, even for the $200 less, Devontae Adams might be in an even better spot against Atlanta. Do you worry with this Atlanta Green Bay game that doesn't shoot out like most people think that it will because it's in Green Bay? Uh, Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of weird fact. Both of those teams are, are completely toast and it's in Green Bay. I worry about that a little, but all in all, it's not going to dissuade me from playing a guy like Adams. He's in a phenomenal spot this week. Yeah, he scored 11 touchdowns in 12 games. Who is stopping him on Atlanta? The answer would be no one. Uh, maybe Aaron Rodgers decided he doesn't want to throw him the ball anymore. Maybe he'll just throw it out of bounds more. But that's the only way I really see Devontae Adams not getting there. So between those top three guys, I think that with Brown, he'll come in with by far the lowest ownership. But should he really be $9,000 on the road? I mean, he's, he's incredible and you can always justify it. It's just in a situation like this, Juju was quiet last week. Um, you know, he has to compete for those targets. He, he's going to get looks, but at nine K you need a monster game. I similar to McCaffrey where it's like, I, I get it. He's one of the safest guys. These guys are all incredible. I'll probably look to take the savings, even if it's slight more often than not. So would you go to the other side of the Devonte Adams and just play Julio Jones? Well, uh, <laughs> you tried it last week. I tried it last week. It did not work. I have no problem with that. I, pro it's not going to be like last week where I was way sky high overweight. Um, he did see eight targets, but it amounted to literally nothing, just garbage. Other than that though, he had been rolling and you know, green Bay, I I'm not overly worried that they can cover him, him and Matt Ryan. I I'm going to have some exposure again, kind of doubling down, I guess for, for, what it's worth but he's sub ak he's an afterthought him and deandre hopkins um two guys that i, I hopkins definitely safer but I, i'm going to be looking to them sub ak yeah so the the two guys that i'm starting my lineups with deandre hopkins is one of them if there's some way that you could squeeze in you can do it and play hopkins and keenan allen together i think that's so safe oh yeah keenan allen's another one where he's obviously we just saw the targets it was ridiculous and, and it's going to continue He's in a great spot. They cannot stop him. Cincinnati can't stop anyone. So, um, and Hopkins last week, you know, it, if you just look at the thing, it's like, ah, he didn't have a great game. He could have done what he wanted. The Texans defense um, controlled that game. They, you know, got after Baker and, and it really didn't force Watson and Hopkins to have to do any heavy lifting. Well, a big thing with the Texans recently during this win streak is that they're running the ball almost like 25 times a game. But if you go back and look who they've actually played over the stretch, it's like no one with a good offense. So now with Andrew Luck coming in, I think this could sneakily be the game to target this week. I really like this game. Um, you know, I've been on, I was on Houston defense a lot last week. It worked out. And you're right that the opponents have been teams they can kind of use that blueprint with. This is a different animal. And, and I do think Luck will push them a bit. He's going to put up some points. Obviously, there's no weather concerns. And, and I think we see Deshaun Watson, Hopkins, maybe Demarius Thomas, guys like that, uh, get the full full chance to really produce. So the other guy I will throw into that mix at receivers, T.Y. Hilton. I like yeah, I like I, I like T.Y. a lot here. Yeah. Uh, even though I, I know he's a he's got home roads, but it isn't a dome. So that's the whole thing. Yeah, he he does. He definitely benefits from that. Sixty three hundred. God, yeah, he did have 13 targets last week. Um, no, I'm going to get on board with that. I, I, It's a guy I thought I would have a sliver of. I might have to up that. You know, we have – we'll get to the Ebron situation, which is a mess every week. Uh, I wish I didn't have to deal with that, but T.Y. always has massive upside, and if he's seeing targets like this, it's hard to uh, ignore that. The problem is I think if I paid all the way up to the top, I'd pay for Devontae Adams as my guy to go to this week but i can't envision myself going up this highly if i was going to spend eighty four hundred dollars on a wide receiver i think i'd rather just take another running back so pick two of those big four you think yeah i mean i, I have no problem with that for for me uh i'm gonna try to get by you know if, if there's a couple punt plays someone like samuels maybe you can get to that next tier with the hopkins julios of the world get a couple of them um i don't mind omitting 
you know, those, those top guys are all incredible, but depending on how I balance it out, I think you can get by. I think wide receivers a little deeper where after the big four and running backs, it kind of goes off a cliff. Yeah. It's not that I hate Odell or hate Juju or any of those guys, but I feel like I can mine similar value. Maybe not the exact same upside. Although T Y Hilton possesses the same upside. Deandre Hopkins possesses the same upside. Hell, so does Mike Evans. I don't like Mike Evans this week, but he's on that short list of guys who can just break a slate that I think you're right. After you get past those first four running backs, it's just not the same. Like you're really reaching to find guys who can get to their level, both with floor and with seal. Uh, I mean, what's the difference between Keenan Allen really and Michael Thomas over the past month? Keenan Allen's been way better. That's what I'm saying. Like those prices, if Keenan Allen was, was 86 and Michael Thomas was down there, obviously I would be looking to Thomas more, but these guys, not that they're interchangeable, but it's close enough. Whereas at running back, there's in my opinion, a stark difference um, between those tiers. Uh, Kenny Galladay rates out as a pretty good value. I do not like him. I expect him to be on Patrick Peterson and, Frankly, Devontae Adams didn't do anything against Patrick Peterson last week. It's when he motioned off of Patrick Peterson when he did all of his damage. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders is in a really nice spot against San Francisco as well. He's $6,200, but I, I, you got to help me out here. I might have a problem. I'm looking at Amari Cooper against Philadelphia and thinking, Ooh. how could that go wrong? Yeah, no, it, it can go wrong. That's going to be a real interesting game. I, I don't, I kind of have a gut feel that the Eagles win that me game. Me too. But yeah. I, I, I've been just picking against Dallas every week. And let me tell you, not good for your bankroll. <laughs> no, I've been, I have a weird connection with Dallas, right? I really like them against the Saints. Now I'm jumping off, I think, uh, to go to the other side. That's going to be an interesting matchup. Obviously, the Eagles secondary is just, it, it didn't show against the Redskins because it couldn't because they didn't have a chance because they have no quarterback. But even with Dak, MMRI should test that. And they don't have a lot of, they don't have anyone back there at this point. It's just all second stringers, third stringers. Targets are there. Um, I think I prefer, you've got me now, this T.Y. Hilton thing. I think I prefer someone like Hilton a little more, but Amari is not the worst player in the world. I think more people will go to Amari here. Oh, me too. That's that's part of it. I, you know, Dallas is, as a team and as their, you know, their players, everyone is riding high. If you've been using Amari, it's been helping. Um, obviously, it exploded on Thanksgiving that stuff factors in so the the price is pretty fair the the ownership will be there though the yeah, and if especially if the ownership isn't going to be there on hilton i objectively just taking pricing out of it i like hilton better in this spot so i'll continue to roll with ty hilton i think it's close i think you could use both of them if you really wanted to but if you had to pick one i would use hilton then i would try to find a way to get up to deandre or keenan allen if i could really muster it and if that means playing barkley samuels and then figuring something else out or even at your flex playing someone a bit cheaper because there's three guys down here at like the five thousand dollar and sub level like right near there that i really like both the tampa guys humphreys and chris godwin are right there it doesn't look like deshaun jackson's gonna play this week if he does then obviously i don't like chris godwin enough but larry fitzgerald is someone you gotta play this week i think yeah no kirk uh going to old fitzy no no kirk and slay will be on like tj or will be on whoever else is on this team now uh jj nelson nelson I mean, Chad Williams, right. Chad Williams might be back. Like Sl- Slay yeah. won't be on Larry Fitzgerald. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously that's, that's the, the key because he's, he's very, very good and very fast. So far, you know, he's the kind of guy, I don't know exactly what I want to do with for cash uh, stood out with for me, obviously. I don't know how popular it would be just because the Tampa guys are right there and they've both been producing. They were the, the trick last week was not to take one of them was to pair them. Yeah. Um, which I, I know I spent all this time deliberating whether it should be Godwin or Humphreys. It didn't ultimately matter if they were both great. Uh, so I, I don't mind that one guy, just a little higher up though. I'm going to be not that I'm going back to him, but Jarvis Landry did show some life last week. I think there's a much better matchup. I'm going to kind of jump on here. I think this could be the start of a, a good finish for him. Do you think that Carolina wins this game by 700 points? No, Carolina, I don't know what, I mean, it's got to be me. I was declaring them a real chance for the Saints to get caught. And since then, I don't think they've won. I'm not, they've just completely imploded. So a big part of that Jarvis Landry game, and I only know this because someone at the bar declined my $1,000 bet on this, which I would have lost. So I'm really 
kind of happy that he did not take okay. it. Uh, Jarvis Landry was at 45 yards, uh, like heading like with like 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter or something like that. And the game was completely out of hand. And the guy's like, Jarvis Landry's going to get to 100 yards. And I said, Jarvis Landry sucks. He's not going to get to. He's not going to get to 100 yards in this game. He's like, you want to bet on it? I was like, let's go. Let's put 1000 bucks on it. And he was like, all cowardly wouldn't do it. So, you know, he could have won 1000 bucks, But either way, Landry got there. But it was all an extreme garbage time. So I think that without extreme garbage time, you look at regular Landry where he gets eight targets, catches three of them, and does nothing. Yeah, I mean, it, it was extreme garbage. That whole game was. Uh, this just feels like one of these situations where, where Cleveland – it's tough because I know what you're saying. If Cleveland jumps out ahead, it's going to be Nick Chubb controlling the game on the ground and whatnot. I still, I'm willing to buy. Carolina is just in a free for all right now, um, and I think Landry kind of sustains some some of that volume even without a blowout in a spot like this. Patriots guys, I'm off them this week. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. I, I would assume Gordon's going to draw Xavier Howard, which I don't want to mess around with. Edelman. Edelman, I, I, Ed, Edelman is fine. Just look at all the other yeah. guys that we talked about around him, I think is the problem. That's right. Well well said. Uh, the one guy, and we'll get to him, I'm not giving up. I, I'm definitely going to have a little Gronk. There's no doubt about that. You have Gronk every week. I know. Spoiler alert, it doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> but he does play. He plays every snap. And this, if there is one spot with, if they take Josh Gordon away, he, he really should get chances against this Miami team. I think it sets up perfectly for him. But you can be like, uh, shout out to Sammy Reed for this one, because everyone was freaking out about the, on Yahoo, that Jalen Samuels has this tight end eligibility. He said, listen, it's not fair sometimes. Like, Gronk isn't listed as a right tackle. He's still a tight end. Yeah. That's sad. Why, that's why he's out there. I, it's I, not good. I honestly think that Michelle is the guy to play in this game, if you're going to play one. Take the chance with him. Oof. Yeah, I... I mean, all in all, I'm not going to have a ton of exposure to the Patriots, but Gronk is probably my favorite of the bunch if I do go there. Besides the Tampa guys and Larry Fitz, anyone else in the 4K range that you see as a pretty good value at receiver? Because I'm you know, wishy-washy on most of these guys. Sutton, not, maybe? Yeah, Sutton I, Sutton was good last week. You know, he, he's got ability. He can catch. He's a big guy. Um the other two are just flyer. You know, Traquan Smith is going to have, we've seen it. He is going to have massive games and then he's going to get zero. Uh, that's going to continue week after week. He's in a great spot because that offense is prolific. Uh, Doxon, I don't think you can really go there because he has yeah, no quarterback. No, pass. So. Pa- pass on Doxon. Yeah, pass. What about Golden Tate? No. Um, just straight no? up no. Okay. Just- I, I refuse to be sucked into that nonsense. It does feel very trappy. I'm not going to lie. Caught all seven, found the end zone. Um, but if Deshaun if Deshaun Jackson sits, can you give me a case where Chris Godwin's not a better play? Not really. God, I could give you – for me, I would, I would split the difference. If I had to rank three of them, it would be Godwin, Tate, and then Humphreys. I, I think this is the week that Humphreys comes back to earth a bit. He's just been producing – non-stop i know the target's been good but the guy's finding the end zone every week and, yeah, and yeah, well i mean he basically took oj howard's spot in the red zone yeah it's crazy no he it's it's honestly true um not saying that he, he can't have a, a fine game but now the price is getting up there i would rather roll the dice with golden tate at what should be somewhat less ownership but See, i agree godwin's the best of the three godwin's the best of the three and i think that fits is probably one he, he could be better just slightly worse yeah, Fitz is in the top of those lists too. Um, that's a totally different situation, though, for me. I, I think he's the safest of the bunch. I would probably roll the dice in tournaments maybe more with Godwin and Tate. See, I don't even know about that because with, with so many limited options and a tough run defense against Detroit and Slay taking out someone for at least like one-third of the field, like Rosen only throws to Fitzgerald anyway. Like this could just be 17 targets. It's going to be 17 points total in this game it's good i just he, yeah the targets are going to be there and i think that's why the f- the floor is pretty good i'm just not sure how many truly how many touchdowns are scored in this one this could be a really ugly game what's so, the total do you know i believe it's 38 yeah there you go okay i was gonna say is it so 40 that's not ideal yeah it's, it's actually 40 and a half now Oh, well, see, everyone's smashing the over. They know. Boku points in this game because they know Larry Fitz and LeGarrette Blunt. That's all you need. Uh, and yeah. and uh, we'll get to it in a second. Anyone else in this $4,000 range? The San Francisco guys. No Chris Harris on Denver now. 
that it looks like Goodwin will be back. Pettis has been straight fire the past two weeks. Like, cool. do you have, do you have interest in these guys? Because I don't really. I I don't. Um, I kept waiting for Bourne to to kind of emerge. It's not going to happen, I guess, with the guys coming back. It, it's tough, but I, I don't think you can peg the production. And like I said, these this is another guy. People are going to notice the game logs with Pettis. They're going to go to him somewhat. And there's a lot of risk there, even though he has been producing. I'm not not super high on my list right now. So the final guys in the $4,000 range, Sanu, Cobb, Devontae Parker, Jordy Nelson, John Brown, Zay Jones. We using Zay Jones? No. We pair him up with. Triple stack, Allen, Jones, Robert Foster, win a million dollars. Shady. Just put in Shady no, there. Don't, just, don't, just don't use Shady. I, I can't believe you, you have no – oh, my God. Yeah, Zay Jones is becoming uh, – I mean, what a connection. Allen to Zay Jones. I think we all knew that was going to – it was just a matter of time. Um, no, I guess for me, if I had to go down here, I'd probably roll the dice. If you don't want to play DeAndre Hopkins, Demarius Thomas is a good player. I think he's better than this tag. I, I, uh, I, I actually think the Kiki would be the play if he's back. Kiki, yeah, same kind of – I put him in the same bucket too. It's just you want exposure to the Texans – passing game and you don't want to take the obvious target i have no problem with either of them so zay jones he's a hero he's down here any of the like the dolphins should score in this game so you have Devonte parker you have kenny stills i always prefer parker just because i think that he's better even though they never use him that way but he seems like the type of big bodied guy with a lot of athleticism that can really frustrate the patriots he actually reminds me a lot of Corey davis i see that yeah i mean he's I feel like he's more built to, to do that. Kenny Stills is just like, oh, he caught a 70-yard touchdown. Um, <laughs> but he, he does that semi-occasionally, and it's it's nice. But I, I don't think I'm going to go to Miami much. Maybe Drake, as you mentioned before. It's just not a lot to, to love there. Uh, shout out to friend of the show, Chris Raybon, at Chris Raybon on Twitter of the Action Network. He, he put this out here. The Bills released Calvin Benjamin and Andre Holmes, and they were essentially the difference between a disaster and a normal rookie year for Josh Allen, uh, Josh Allen in passing. When Josh Allen passed to Holmes and Calvin Benjamin, he was 18 of 43. That's 41.8%. 239 yards and 5.56 yards per attempt and one touchdown. On 2.3% of throws, he found a touchdown to those two guys. To every other receiver on the team, he's completing near, he's completing over 59% of his passes, average almost seven yards per attempt and throwing he's throwing four touchdowns so just just three percent so the touchdown rate is not really that much higher but he's completing passes to these other guys where calvin benjamin just got no separation yeah no that's i'm glad that everyone is now realizing that yeah that was an, an anchor weighing society down uh josh allen in particular so getting rid of that open up the door for uh these new weapons that he has with foster who i didn't even know that was a person <laughs> Uh, until a couple of weeks ago, he, when he he's, caught that. he's actually not a bad guy to take a shot on. They throw it deep to him all the oh, time. Oh yeah, the laser, Josh Allen lasers. Anytime those get completed, it's that Foster guy. Um, it's not the work. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy to think of all these quarterbacks that Josh Allen's had some of you know, some of the biggest games of the week a couple times now this year. It's it's really been crazy. Well, Josh Allen really has a good situation on the go because his team sucks. No one expects anything out of him. And he's really not all that good, but he's fun to watch because you've had no idea what's going to happen on any play. And he's good at fantasy. <laughs> yeah, he's he's just awesome. I That's not a guy that, uh, you know, it's, it's just great. It's awesome. I hope he gets weapons and he gets a better line going forward. Um, are you, yeah, looking are, down are, here, are, are you bummed that the Jets took Darnold, not Josh Allen? Oh yeah. I was super bummed. I, I thought obviously, well, I was, I was really bummed because I had a, a sizable wager that Darnold was going to go one to the Browns, which did not work. And then it, I thought the Jets were going to take Josh Allen. I was super excited. And then I, it's hard to blame them. I get it with Darnold, but I, I do wish it fell differently. Uh, Sam Darnold, who has to sit out games because he's too afraid to play football. <laughs> Can't, can't get those reps in. This is what I'm talking about. This is the game where Buffalo is going to control the clock and Shady is going to come back to relevance. All right, so we're in this below $4,000 range, the giveaway range. Do you have a single favorite play from down here? Because I, I keep talking about the stupid Arizona-Detroit game, but I think that Bruce Ellington is a smash this week. If he can find the end zone, he's going to score like 25 points. Well, look at that, 25. I mean you're not going to find many guys down here that are have a legitimate chance for you know around 10 targets which 
He does. He'll, uh, he'll have he'll have over that this week, I think. Really? Yeah. Man, you're you're banking on this Peterson taking away Galladay. I am. Mm-hmm. No, and I, I I totally get that. I, I think it's a very reasonable take. I'll go the complete opposite way in the sense of Bruce Ellington. You know, he's going to catch plenty of balls. Not going to rack up a ton of yards. I'll take a deep flyer on Antonio Callaway, who if he catches a couple, you're probably there because it's going to be like a 70 yard touchdown. Um, huge risk to get zero. You know, he's one of those guys. He's not going to get as many targets, but I'm banking that the, the Cleveland passing game is a lot more prevalent than most this week. That's why I kind of meant to Landry and Callaway. We'll talk about Baker when we get to QBs. I guess if I was going to take a shot on one of those guys, no Cole Beasley, Amari Cooper is obviously going to be a focal point. Michael Gallup yeah, at $3,700 wide receiver. I mean, all wide receivers just absolutely destroy the Philadelphia Eagles, unless Mark Sanchez is throwing the ball. And I hear he's not starting for Dallas this week. So if you didn't want to take Cooper, you don't necessarily need to pivot onto T.Y. or one of those guys. You could just take Gallup for the much cheaper price. I have no problem with that. Yeah, he's going to be out there. Philly, it's a mess. Um, So, yeah, if Beasley sits, your boy Aitman is there. Eight, eight man, he caught a touchdown. I know, I know. He I had saw three it. red zone targets, too. Yeah, he could have had... That other, it was close. It wasn't his fault that he didn't get his foot in there um, on the first one, but I, I don't think I'm going back to him. Just the Raiders are too frustrating, but there's a couple guys here that, that you met, you know, Ellington. It's not the worst range. There are a couple of plays. Uh, the last one I'll throw out is John Ross, just because I have no idea what's going on with them. And they could be in garbage time after one quarter this week. It won't be 0-0 for you know, the, the first 27 minutes of the game. At least I, for the Chargers' sake, I certainly hope not. But he's sort of those that a big play guy. And they do use him in the red zone, too, which is just – I think he's so small that people don't see him, so he's just open. I don't re- – yeah, that's one of the more – bizarro things like when when john ross became pertinent it was like well all he needs to you know he has that burner speed then he would have one catch for six yards and a touchdown and it's just like what is going on here but i just worry a little with driscoll i don't know how well he'll be able to even get him some of those potential deep shots he's still one of the fastest guys in the league and you can always get there with just pure upside like that we, we didn't even really talk about boyd but no aj green like he like he ended up with over 90 yards last week yeah, I mean that was he he definitely caught a break that Chris Harris went down. Um, but we, this is just this question that we've kind of been trying to answer on the fly. Is Boyd actually helped by AJ Green not being there when now he's gonna get the best coverage, the most attention? Uh the price is normalized a bit. He was getting really up there. So I don't I don't hate it, but I, I still, you know, the guys we talked about, Hilton in particular, still ahead of him for me in the pecking order. All right, talk me out of this guy. Three weeks ago, three games ago against the Jets, he was $0 on DraftKings. The week after, he was 3000 The week after that, he was 3300 This week, he remains 3300 In those three games, his average catch is 35 yards, 47 yards, and 27 yards. Now, it's going down. It's hard to really maintain a 47-yard catch <laughs> average, but Robert Foster, man, 3300 that's the man, the man of the hour. Yeah, I, we will see, you know, there's, I'm never going to talk. I, I'm the wrong person to be on the show if we need level headed Josh Allen takes, because I'm all about him and this guy who's catching, catching those lasers. I don't think this is the best game for a guy like that, only in the sense of maybe it gets a little toned down. But at the same time, I, I, I think I think that we're putting a bit too much faith in the Bills here to really run crazy in this game. This game should be pretty close, I would think. Yeah, it's just this is one of the few teams where, like, you can objectively look at this game and say that the Bills the Bills should win this game. Um, yeah, that's always a spot to bet against the Bills, by the way. Probably, yeah, I would agree with that. But the Jets are on the other side, so it's just like I don't know what that really does for you. Um, People will play this guy and, and not real people, but he, he'll have a couple. He's not going to be, you're not going to solo him in something like the Millie. 3,300. There's nobody else even remotely down Cordero Patter. Like I, I couldn't imagine going to anyone else. Maybe born if, if the receivers are still all banged up on the Niners, but it's pretty dicey. Once you get sub, these are real extreme punts. Do you know that Deontay Thompson's on the bills? I thought for whatever reason he was on the Cowboys. Uh, yeah, no, he, I didn't. When did, when did I he didn't. end up back on the Bills? He was on the team last year. 
Deontay. No, he was. He, he was on Dallas every week until two weeks ago. And then all of a sudden he's on Buffalo. Weird. But here's mm-hmm. the big thing, though. Uh, Zay Jones playing 92% of the snaps. Zay Jones is the Bills receiver to play if you can play one. But Kelvin Benjamin was playing 58% of the snaps. That was last week. So you have Isaiah McKenzie. You have Robert Foster. Deontay Thompson playing around 35%. If you can tick up Foster into that, like, 60, 60-something range, that he's the guy who's just open on Josh Allen's scrambles is basically what I'll say, that he's just open behind the defense because people may not know. Like, he might be a ghost. Like, he might be only visible to me and you. I don't know. Six cents situation. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that would help. Um, if I knew that, I would target him a lot more than I'm planning to. I'll tell you that much. He's like Marlon Wayans in the sixth man. <laughs> I saw something about the sixth man yesterday. That's weird. Um, yeah. I, like I said, if you want to take a flyer, it's, I always prefer to do it with a guy where it's like, okay, this, the home run upside, he can get there in big field tournaments. Cause, cause some of these guys down there, it's like, yeah, they may catch four balls but they're probably going to get you nine and that doesn't kill you. But what are you really doing in a gigantic field tournament? Well, that's, that? that's what I mentioned about Ellington, that he has to score a touchdown to yeah. really do something for you. But I think that out of all the weeks to score a touchdown, this could be the week for him. Watch TJ Jones go off. That guy. I, I tried to do that on Thanksgiving. Did not work. Ugh, so bad. Um, yeah. Uh, no, I, Ellington will get enough volume though, that his floor is, is almost elevated to where it's getting you there on its own quarterbacks Mahomes is at the top people in season-long fantasy leagues are asking me if they should bench Patrick Mahomes this week I always like to monitor this stuff because it generally lends itself to ownership prognostication for DraftKings for that week Uh, Mahomes is the most expensive quarterback he's down in price in a bad matchup mind you he is seven thousand dollars against the Ravens what do you think his ownership is going to be because I could see it being like five percent which is oh my god I don't know about that i I'll tell you this much. I'm, I get labeled as a Mahomes hater just because I don't, whatever. That's neither here nor there. I'm more interested in him this week uh, than normal. You know, the, the, I know it's a scary matchup, but this guy, I mean, I'm not even remotely deterred by playing him. He's actually got a little price drop. Uh, he's at home. If he's sub 10%, I will be way overweight. That's for sure. Fun fact about Patrick Mahomes. Uh, I mean, some scoring systems are different, but DraftKings-wise, he hasn't scored fewer than 20 DraftKings points in any game this season. There you go. Like, look, the guy just does it. Even, I mean, it, tough matchups, all that really does is, to, to me, is, yeah, he's more prone to have a couple turnovers, and that's not really going to hurt you. He's still going to be running around, making plays, and at home, we, we don't know. I, I think they put the Ravens defense to the test. Obviously, this is a totally different animal than the Falcons. Finally remembered who the other player that I used in 100% of my lineups was last week. Who was it? Broncos D. Oh, okay. Well, I don't even know. How did that turn out? Good? They, they, had, they had like 14 points. Yeah, there was a lot of Ds that were pretty solid last week. Yeah, um, I think they were the highest scoring D that didn't score a touchdown. Oh, they didn't get one. Yeah, there was... I mean, I turned, it was like, I, I turned the games on and, and the Giants were already dancing in the end zone on D. And I was just like, wait, what? Um, there was a lot of Ds that found the end zone last week. So Mahomes, if I'm paying up, that's going to be for me. The other three that I have the most interest in, and we'll talk about Matt Ryan because him and Aaron Rodgers, I'm kind of wishy-washy on because I don't know how much I want to invest because I really like to limit the amount of quarterbacks and the amount of stacks that I make. But Mahomes for sure. Josh Allen for sure. Uh, although I don't have the utmost confidence, I think you just keep rolling him out based on his upside. The same reason that the same reason that people play Lamar Jackson every week. And I'll continue to pound the table on this one. Little pounds. But Josh Allen's just better Lamar Jackson. Just play him instead. But I love Andrew Luck this week. This is the week to go back to Luck. Okay. Uh, I totally get that. Um, obviously, last week broke the streak. I, that's more of an outlier to me than anything. He's going to get right back to it. No problem with that. I will go same price, other side of the game. Deshaun? I'm going to be – yeah, I get it. Deshaun. No? Yeah, no, I, I like it. I, I think that this okay. is a game to target. It's just they've been running so much that it's kind of tricky with them. And I like the stacking options better from the Colts side because Ebron, T.Y., Luck, bring it back with Hopkins, and I think you're looking good. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be a game I'm definitely going to take both sides of it where I have stacks like you just said, and then I have Deshaun – you know, Hopkins, Demarius Thomas, bring it back with someone like Hilton or Ebron. It, it can work both ways. It's a good one. And then I will throw out, I'm, I'm jumping right on Baker. I know he had a rough week last week. I thought he was going to have a rough week last week. There's a much better spot. 
not going to be popular. Sub 6K, no, no problem with him. Well, the one thing that you might be able to do here, because I think that, do you, do you think that Josh Allen will kind of be chalky? That's my one worry about him is that everyone's kind of hip to what's going on with Josh Allen now. Now everyone wants to use him. It's never usually a good sign for like not good quarterbacks, but Dak Prescott's only $100 more and he has the best matchup ever. Yeah, I mean, it, it's funny because like, I feel like I should just be getting... I, I div- dividends or, or something from this Josh Allen thing. Cause now everyone is talking about it, everyone's jumping on and I, I didn't really cash in on him at all. This doesn't feel like the right spot to just jump on completely with this guy. There's a giant, giant range of, you know, in terms of busting. So I, I would look to someone like Dak because the ownership on Allen, you know, it's been relatively non-existent throughout. That's not going to be the case this week. People are going to play him with this matchup and with what he's been doing. The other guy, and you mentioned it right off the hop in terms of Philip Lindsay, that the Niners' run defense isn't bad. It's not good. I believe it's 16th by DVOA against the run, but they're like 29th against the pass. That if you want to roll out a very cheap stack that's not the Josh Allen, Robert Foster, Zay Jones stack, you could run out the Case Keenum, Emmanuel Sanders, Cortland Sutton stack in a pretty nice spot against... You know, their defense is still attacking, but it's not great. And if you keep Freeman and Philip Lindsay out of the end zone, the touchdowns come through the air, all of a sudden you have a cheap quarterback and a stack that no one has. That isn't a really nice spot. I don't know if I'll pull the trigger on that, but I see the case for it, if nothing else. I see what you did there. See the case for it. Um, Yeah, no, I mean, I I don't mind that Broncos. It's dicey. I've tried that a couple of times this year. There's, you just need a game. If you can get the game script, right. That that's obviously the key. It's got to get up and down. They need to be throwing. Would you, the real question here is, would you put your boy Lacoste in these stacks? Yes. Yes. Go right back to him. Why not? I mean, if, if I didn't even see what he turned out to be, but I saw everyone around the industry talking about him last week and he comes up with a big zero. So it, this is usually the week to go to those types of guys. Yeah, no, I mean, if I do do it, he he's probably going to be part of it. Um, and that's not the worst idea. I, I do think that they, they have a better chance of having a lot of points via the air than I, I don't, I know Philip Lindsay has been great, but I don't think that he has a huge game here to be honest. Matt Lacoste played 80% of the snaps last week in the Broncos offense ended up with a big, big zero, but they didn't really have to pass in that game. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. If it gets, again, it's game script. The, there's a lot of ways this goes horribly wrong if you do it. And I'm not, this is not my priority where I'm saying I need to make sure uh, I get all this. I, I prefer the guys we talked about, but as an under the radar cheap stack where you can, if you get it right, then you're picking amongst, you know, you're not spending a ton of your cap. Then you can pick the best available players at a ton of positions. Breeze or Jameis. I feel I like go- I, I've used Jameis um, a lot the past two weeks feel like this might be the week to jump off. I'm more interested in Breeze than Jameis if I go there, but honestly, not overly interested in either of them. Yeah, the Jameis, uh, this just feels like a dicey one. I know he he almost produces it in spite of how bad he is at times. So if, he, if he's getting – he did have 48 yards rushing last week. That's kind of surprising, but um, – Nah, I, I don't know. This I try not to play too many quarterbacks because you, you can start making a case for on a 13 game slate. Yeah, you can end up with 15 quarterbacks and then you're in. That's not the way to do it. So when I narrow it down, luck will be my main quarterback. He's the one that I like the most for the price point. Uh, Mahomes, I'll just have him because I think he's going to come at low ownership and he's Patrick Mahomes. Josh Allen because of that upside and how cheap he is. But luck will be my main guy. If I had to throw one more in there, uh, you kind of sold me a little bit on Baker. I kind of like Dak. Case Keenum is one that I could potentially use depending on the builds that I wanted to do. But the Matt Ryan, Aaron Rodgers situation is like, do we get a fucking pissed Aaron Rodgers and he comes out and is Aaron Rodgers again? I, that's on I the table. And if that's the case, he's throwing the ball 70 times and throwing for nine touchdowns. Yeah. And he's only, I mean, it, it is true. He's sixth K at home against the Falcons defense. Um, That's a game. I just, it, it feels like no matter what I do, I'm going to get it wrong. I, I just don't have a really good feel. Obviously I have no pulse on what's going on with Atlanta. Green Bay is a tricky team right now. I'm, I'll probably hedge it and try to get some Rogers exposure. I'd feel pretty uh, exposed if I had zero of it, but at the same time, I do prefer luck and Deshaun Watson over him basically at the same price. 
Tight ends, if we go to the top, you got Travis Kelsey, 6700 bucks. You got Zach Ertz. You got Eric Ebron. You got George Kittle. Those are your big four. Do you have a preference here? Because Chalk Ebron has yet to be a letdown this season. Yeah, it's insane. Um, this is just 16 targets for him last week. Didn't even find the end zone. He was still there. Uh, Travis Kelsey, it's hard to not go there right at the top just because – you know, you transition it over to wide receiver and he's priced, you know, way less than someone like DeAndre Hopkins. He's in the T.Y. Hilton bucket. This guy, you know, is going to be involved. We saw it last week. The ownership, I think, funnels to him if people have the money to pay up. Um, makes me kind of look to Kittle and Ebron a little more. But all in all, if I, if I can just take any of them, I'm taking Travis Kelsey. Uh, games without Sammy Watkins this season, targets for Travis Kelsey, 13, 15, and 10. Yeah, that's good. It's like, it's hard to, you know, obviously he gets red zone looks, catches touchdowns. If he's getting that kind of, of targets, it's tough to say, you know what, I'm going to try to be, this doesn't feel like the spot to be overly sneaky. Is there any pay down tight end that you like? Would you, if you like Baker, would you go back to Njoku? I have no problem with him. Um, it, it's tough w- with him because we've seen some floor games. We saw a ceiling game here and there. He's got to find the end zone probably. Uh, he's a little all over the map. I wish he was a little cheaper, to be honest, but you could definitely do worse. There's not that much down there. So the guys that are down there, Driscoll just throws the CJ Uzma every third drop back, and he catches like 10% of them. But he'll get volume, if nothing else. He's at 3,500. Brayton mm-hmm. is 3,500 too. That's you know, expected to be a high scoring game, but Adam Humphreys keeps stealing all of his touchdowns. Then you have Ian Thomas at 2,700 taking over for uh, the injured Greg Olson, who was put on IR. Then Matt Lacoste, 2,700 bucks. Like, I don't hate going back to that well. No, I mean, we talked about that. 2,700, you're just getting a. He's one of the only guys available down there uh, who can produce. I know I'm not allowed to bring this guy up on the show. But How dare you? Don't even do it. 4,400. I mean, man, Jimmy Graham, I'm just saying. Oh, I thought you were going to say Jared Cook. Oh, no, no. I know I know better than to do that, but I, I thought Jimmy Graham was also somewhat blacklisted. No, I mean, he, he, he pulled a big Jimmy Graham last week. Eight catches, 50 yards. Oh, boy. That was his best game of the year. I know. best. It felt like best game of the decade. Uh, the guy, honestly, you know, we, we've mentioned a couple of people, but Austin Hooper is sitting there 4,300 other gets, side of that game. He kind of just gets it done every week, doesn't he? He really does. He was the one. I didn't have any bright spots in the Atlanta thing. He was the one guy, though. He found the end zone last week. He just does his thing. Uh, you know, the targets fluctuate, but at the same time, one of the more reliable guys out of the non-elite you know, targets. Yeah. At least five targets in each of the past four weeks, at least four receptions in each of those, the yardage is never going to follow, but he scored two touchdowns. It's really tough with him. Like the the one good thing about Brait is that they use him in the red zone. So if he does cash in on his limited opportunity, it's usually for something big that I honestly, I think I'm just going to pay for Ebron. Ebron. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to argue with those type of targets. If I can get to Kelsey, I'll get to Kelsey, but that's tough. It is. Um, I, this is just a week. What I try to do in a week like this, and I can already anticipate it, is to be unique is maybe I try to pair a couple of them up. So maybe I take Kelsey and Ebron and I go more of a balanced uh, build overall and try to di- differentiate even with somewhat popular plays. Defenses to close this out. The Broncos are the most expensive at $3,600. The Chargers, Bills, Steelers, and that's it for the $3,000 plus defenses. For below that, you have the Lions, Pats, Saints, Cowboys, Texans, Panthers. I really like the Broncos again this week, but yeah, they're a bit pricey at 36. I don't like to pay up that much. We've been talking about saving some money in some spots. Do you know, and this kind of correlates to something I said a little bit earlier, the defense that I will probably be using in most of my lineups? They're the only defense that is $2,700. Let's see. That'll that'll narrow it down for me. All right. We got the uh, New Orleans Saints for you. That seems like such a good spot. Yeah. I mean, especially you did allude with Jameis. He's he, A, they're not going to be popular. B, it's Jameis. And he can have success while throwing five picks, um, multiple touchdowns, high upside. 
points will be scored in that game. That's fine. Uh, keep James. No, it, keep Jameis throwing. <laughs> yep, that's it's almost good. That's not even that bad of a problem. Yeah, the chalk defense I like. If I had unlimited money, it would be the Chargers. I just think this is a game where they, you know, all assets facets just murder the Bengals. What about if you really want to take? I have a sneaky one. How sneaky is it? It's pretty sneaky. Twenty three hundred. Let Redskins. Me, let, oh, I was say Redskins D against Eli. It, the Giants offense has been better in since they went s- since Ingram's been hurt and they limited his snaps and played that jumbo set. Eli's not going down as much. No, and this is all that is true. And just to add more to against my own take, I do worry with San- Sanchez that he puts that defense in some potentially really rough spots. But at home, twenty three hundred, it is still Eli. They get some pressure. I don't think that they're just dead and buried yet. So I'm going to roll the dice there if I have to truly punt. I think if you're going to go that low, the Cardinals at home against Stafford is probably the better spot. I figured you were going to say that, and you're probably right. Um, I so I don't know. I always I play the Redskins defense a lot more than most. Uh, I get sucked into them when they're at home. You're not going to go to the Chiefs defense, are you? Uh, probably not. Although I think that actually does make a lot of sense just because Lamar Jackson's prone to do something stupid. Like we saw last week, uh, yeah. the, the Falcons D was a fine play. If you played them against the Ravens, they scored a touchdown and where he runs so much, it's almost like the Jetsy, like the jets blitz so much that Allen takes so many sacks because so many of his plays just turned into him running in circles in the backfield. And the same thing kind of happens with Lamar Jackson. They have a better design for him to run. So he doesn't get tackled behind the line of scrimmage all that much, but Josh Allen does. So the jets could be potentially in play. Here's the thing about the saints. The past three weeks, they've scored 15, 15 and 13 points. Even on that Thursday night game, they scored twice as many fantasy points as a defensive unit than Dallas did. They have 13 sacks the past two weeks. And now, they get Jameis. Like, I, I just love it. Yeah. And you know, they'll be ready. I, I, it seems like two seasons ago at this point, but how the Bucks went into the dome and, and won a game is a bizarre world. So it would be hard to imagine them getting swept uh, by the Bucks this year. Now, the one, I guess, caveat to this is they played Atlanta at home, Philly at home, and Dallas indoors. Now we're going outdoors and the Saints can be a little bit different, but I'd still be willing to take that i think the the big problem i have with the redskins is are the giants going to be passing in that game and the answer is probably not no maybe not but if it's yeah i guess that's true i I still think though in a game that a could be very low scoring to the point that you're actually getting a boost for 2300 and b if they can get some push on the ground i'm not everyone is higher on the giants now you know they're coming off they're playing some better. I don't think the Redskins just roll over and die. I'm not saying they, they're they they're done for the playoffs, but this should be a somewhat competitive game still. Yeah, it's only three and a half on the spread. Yeah, like I, I think that's a fair spread. I wouldn't fault anyone for, for splashing on the skins in that one. All right, let's talk about a few stacks before I let you go, and you can go do your live show over at awesomeo.com. It's what, every day at 2.30? Yeah, most days. Uh, sometimes we move it to, to night on Thursdays because we talk a little more showdown. Uh, but, you know, you can check out our homepage from A to B, a promo code. You'll get a free week if you want to come check it out. So the stacks to look at, the highest scoring projected game on the slate is New Orleans and Tampa. I think that might hit the under, to tell you the truth. I'm going to be under. I hope you're right because I'm I'm going to be underweight on that game. Way. It's a tough Same. game to figure out from the Saints side of the ball because they have so many options. Yeah. No, This we've seen this time and time again where the Saints can rack up points outside of Kamara and Michael Thomas. And that, that makes it incredibly difficult. Uh, I've already bet the Indy Houston game. I bet it over 48 when it opened. It's now 49 and a half. This total is only going up and up. I think we said this a few times during the show, but this is my favorite game to target on this slate. And it's not even the second highest. The second highest total is Baltimore, Kansas city. Hmm. Yeah, no, I'm with you. That's on the short list of games that I really like. I like both sides of it. Um, and then the one I think I'm higher on than, than you is, the Carolina Cleveland game, the Brown side in particular, uh, I think that offense gets on track and it's not just with the ground game. I might have to parlay those two together over just over on a- a- AFC South games that do not involve the Titans or Jacksonville. There we go. I, I think that's a recipe for success. Yeah. The old, that's going to be a barn burner Thursday night. Jack Jags Titans. My God. Well, the first time around it was nine, six. So it's yeah. probably going to score more points than that. Yeah, we've got a we've got a low bar here. Um, 
I'm looking at total right now. It says 37 and a half. That's pretty ugly. So that's actually gone down. It was 30. That was the game that was 38 and a half that I forgot about. What would, I, I actually threw this out here. I do a short little clip for like the DraftKings like YouTube page and their app and everything for that specific showdown slate that I think you can play Mariota, Fournette, both kickers and both defenses. Yeah, that's going to be a super popular build. Just oh, that's going to be but, that's, that's going to be super popular. It can't be. I mean, that, it can't be that popular because people it, aren't people aren't thinking that outside the box. No, but pe- people in games like this, rightfully so, that's where you're going to see a lot of defense captain um, running backs, just because getting even kickers. Like if a k- kicker produces nine and it's a game with a shootout, it's hard to imagine that's part of the optimal. But in a game that only has thirty total points. Sometimes getting six to eight to nine, that those can be part of, of the winning lineup. Uh, and you can leave a ton of salary on the table in a game like that. I'm going to make that parlay right now. The over, oh. o- the over, over parlay. And I'll, bet, and I'll bet the the other two. I can't believe that's up to 49 and a half. Like I, I literally bet it yeah, last look at night. You moving lines. I, I bet it last night and it was 48. So that's going to continue. That's going to crack 50 like momentarily, I think. Should yeah, let, it's, it's, I should let everyone out. The odds and lines are subject to change and to see the website for actual odds. If you or anyone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Ben Raza on Twitter, at JazzRazDFS. Again, you can watch him 2.30s most days on awesomeo.com. And then, obviously, for the Thursday night game, that showdown slate. What else you got coming out there? We got, we got golf coming back soon. Yeah, I know. I'm on a little golf hiatus. Don't worry. It'll be back soon enough. Um but it's a busy time of the year. Obviously, the college sports, college basketball is rolling. You know, they're in full swing, bowl season. Um, so I'll be doing some content for that, just mostly for fun. But having, has them having some fun with that. It, it's a good time of the year. So stop on over, make some bets, watch some bowl games. Uh, that is fun. It makes December golf hiatus that much better. Uh, you can use promo code the PME or just PME. I forget what it is now. You can try both yeah. to see if either of them work. But the one for you, which works, is what again? Uh, from A to B. So get that. You get a free week and you can check everything out. All right. I'm Pat Mayo. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at the PME if you want to get into a draw. For 20 DK bucks, like the episode, leave your DraftKings handle. Tell me your favorite receiver from below. $4,000 for you audio listeners. Leave a review, five stars, say something nice, and your DraftKings handle. Boom. You're in the draw for 20 DK dollars as well. Winners announced Monday live on the show, 10 a.m. Eastern time. I'll also be live Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern time with Cust, with Gary, and to take your questions and break everything down. The Ownership Projection Show will come out Saturday morning. Film Friday night, out Saturday morning to get you prepped for the DraftKings slate this weekend. Good luck out there. The Millie's back to 20 bucks. Someone go mass enter and win a million bucks and then let me know. And I'll pretend like, you know, you listened to me and took credit. I'll take credit for it, although I have nothing to do with it. But someone go win there if it can't be me or Ben, I suppose. Good luck this week. I'll see you next time. Experience! Experience!